Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, as the world around moves about. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, past the world around moves about. Jesus calls us in, sends us out, bearing fruit in our world of doubt, brings us all to prayer to share. Again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, pass around. Okay, I was just reading your comments and some of them said you couldn't hear me, so I disconnected something and reconnected something else. Ah, yeah, it says much better now. Okay, we'll go with that then. Ah, I love trying to figure this out. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in our opening dialogue. God of new beginnings, today we remember our baptisms. A day, a day shrouded in an infant's hidden memory. A day chiseled in the sharp memory of a teenager. A day gloriously in the memory of a new convert. Your, promise live in, your promises live in each of us, born anew in the waters of baptism. Generation to generation, your spirit lives in each of us. Walking in your footsteps, step by step, your forgiveness lives in each of us. Kneeling in repentance, open to your spirit, we are welcomed anew into your presence. Our song of praise this morning is Shout to the Lord. himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts 2, uh, chapter 2, and from verses uh, 14a and then 36 through 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice to and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know that with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, 
they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other disciples, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and on, a, on, on that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 16, and I will read the uh, light print, and you can answer with the, the second in the, or the bold type. I love the Lord, who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangle me, and the anguish of the grave came upon me, and I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things that God has done to for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, I truly am your servant. I am your servant the child of your handmaiden. You have fed, uh, freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The second reading comes from 1 Peter, the first chapter, the 17th through the 23rd verses. If you invoke as the Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their need, or deeds, I'm sorry, uh, live in reverence, fear, during the time of your exile, you know that you were ransomed from the fruit fru ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now if you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you, that you have genuinely mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and the enduring word of God. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, 
two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to him, them, What were you discussing with each other while you walked along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all of this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found him just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer for these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead, as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went and stayed with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Christ. Christ. I would invite you to sit down, but my guess is you're all still sitting. <laughs> well, it's kind of a sad story. At least if you stop reading it too soon. It's a story we find ourselves in today, too, if we stop reading too soon. For Cleopas and his traveling companion, nothing makes sense anymore. Their hopes are dashed. Perhaps they've been conned all along, especially by what this Jesus said and was promised. What they're hearing now sounds like fake news. So much so that they're just throwing up their hands and headed home. Each step feels like the weight of the world is on their shoulders. And all they can do is to keep walking. Imagine what it must have felt like to be those first Emmaus walkers. They're on the road, not headed for glory, but back home. Back to ordinary, routine life. Their greatest note Hopes have not come to pass. In spite of all that they knew, all the stories they could rehearse, in spite of the witnesses of others, they simply had not seen Jesus. The prophecies of Jesus and hope of redemption grew cold. And they were not able to sustain them any longer. They began to suspect that the whole thing had been a mistake. 
a worthy hope, but one unlikely to ever be realized. For them, Good Friday was anything but good. Time passed and there was no change, no resurrection, no Jesus. Time to take your lumps, go back home and face the ridicule of everybody who said, told you so. Cleopas and his companion were obviously devout followers of Jesus. They knew the stories by heart. Even though the scripture doesn't mention them anywhere else, they must have been following Jesus most of his earthly ministries. They knew the Hebrew scripture promises, and they saw how this Jesus, at least while he was walking around Galilee with them, seemed to fulfill them. They had their checklist, and Jesus was meeting the requirements. These are learned folks, not easily taken in by a charlatan. But now as this third day comes to a close, they can't make it all compute. It's the third day and still no resurrection. It's the third day and no restoration of Israel. It's the third day and they find themselves hopeless. For everything they knew, what a crushing blow it was to be on this third day and nothing to show for it. It was a slow, disappointing walk back to Emmaus. The third day had come and Jesus hadn't followed through on what he promised. If you stop reading this text right here, it is nothing but a sad, hopeless story. For all these two knew, none of it made any difference. They knew all the right answers, that's for sure. And when a stranger comes in, joins them, they can tell very accurately the story of Jesus' life and ministry. And they even know about his gory and disappointing death. They know the promises too, but none of it made a difference to them. Their unrecognized traveler even tries to educate him further. He links everything up. He puts all the pieces together, wraps the Messiah thingy in a nice package with a bow and goes, here it is. So a question for you today as you walk with these two back to Emmaus. Why are you a Christian? Why do you follow Jesus? Is it because the gospel has been proved to you? Were you educated into faith? Have you run all the data through a computer and had it spit back out to you? The answer is Jesus. Now, as much as I am a supporter of education, Lord knows I have been in school most of my life, faith cannot be educated into most people. That's not to say that learning about the tenets of faith, knowing the stories and being able to talk intelligently about the faith that is within us isn't important, because it is. If it weren't, I wouldn't be teaching Bible studies and confirmation or much else of what I do. In high school, I helped teach proof geometry. And in college, I taught health sessions for logic. I even took a philosophy of mathematics course. And I worked in law. I know how to prove things. And I can tell you when an argument is flawed and why it's flawed and when you made the wrong connections, I'm good at arguing. <laughs> but no matter how much I do that, I have never educated anybody into faith. Like that unrecognized companion on the road, I can tell you many things, I can help you discover many others, and I can prove how this faith thing works all together. But it is often fruitless to try and explain somebody into faith or argue them into faith. That's just not how it usually works. Now, there are admittedly for some way it does. Lee Strobel has written a bunch of books um, about kind of the logical arguments for faith. Um, he was once a South Avowed atheist and was also an investigating journalist. So he started investigating the, the claims of Christianity and proved to himself and then shared with others 
why he believed. Check out some of his books, The Case for Christ, The Case for Faith, The Case for Easter, and so many others. He now writes from a Christian point of view, explaining the complexities of faith. What worked for Strobel and others didn't work for our Emmaus walkers. If we stop reading their story after the logical case for Jesus being the Messiah is presented, it remains a hopeless, sad story. That unrecognized, unrecognized stranger was ready to move on and make his case for Christ somewhere else. But good manners kept in somehow for Cleopas and his companion, and they figuratively twisted his arm. That's what the Greek means when it says they suddenly urged him. The word literally means twisted an arm to stay with them and have dinner. It's what you do as a good host. Where words failed, actions entered. This one who was unrecognized once took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they believed in Jesus. They knew Jesus. For the first time in three days, they saw Jesus. And they realized that his claims were true. And it happened, faith happened in the breaking of bread. And so compelling was that experience that they get up from the table and they rush back to Jerusalem to tell everybody. A walk that seemed to take forever to get home, Luke says, you know, took like almost immediately. They're back in the community of faith. He and the others went from hopeless to faith burning in their hearts as they recognized Jesus in the breaking of bread. They experienced Jesus and couldn't help but share it. Because of what's all happening in our world right now, it's hard for us to have some of those shared experiences, especially outside our own households. Instead, we have to rely on electronic get-togethers, printed materials, and broadcast programs to help us stay connected. This is the new normal for most of us, at least to a degree. And it doesn't feel right. It's awkward. And we're not sure we can trust this technology stuff. Some people get it, others feel totally out of the loop. And it would be easy to stop reading our story right now and seek into dejection and hopelessness. But our faith calls us not to. Jesus is twisting your arm, so to speak, inviting you to come together here and now, around a table, a font, a pulpit, wherever they may actually physically be, and trust that Jesus is present here and now. I can make all the logical arguments about why that all works, but Jesus invites you to see him in the breaking of the bread to allow him to burn in your hearts, to be with you where you are gathered, and to trust that even though he may have vanished from your sight, that God's grace and love and forgiveness are not limited by our understanding or by our location. As we trust in God's omnipresence, of God always being with us, we get to experience the realness of Jesus. I love it when I can see some of the typed in comments on the back. When I get a chance, I go look at them because it's turned around so that the letters on the screen are right. And I love when people say, we are here, Pastor, or you'll type your name and say, like, Dan is watching, or Rose is here, because it helps you remember that we're all together. You're laughing because you're one of the people who usually says that. I love it. It reminds us that we are gathered in a community just differently. Because it's so easy when we're not in community to forget the power of Christ in our lives. We get it caught up in all the other things and we need each other to remind us that we are still church together here and now. Today, some people will die in faith. And today, others will be born into faith. We cannot stop reading the story Otherwise, we're no part of any of that. 
Jesus comes and walks us home and into community, recounting his story each step of the way. Sometimes it makes sense. It will be logical. And sometimes we just gotta allow whatever that is within us to get triggered and experience Christ in our midst. Perhaps even in a bit of bread and a sip of wine. Are your hearts burning yet? Come, for Christ is present. Please close with me in prayer. Empowering Lord, you turn up in some unlikely places and times often just when we need it most. We read your story and maybe we believe and maybe we don't because it's just not logical. Open our hearts and minds to the new ways you are appearing to us on our modern roadways. Help us to keep reading the story so that we may experience your amazing power and love. And then show us how to run with the good news so that all may hear as it is accord with your will, O oh God, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now turn our hearts to prayer. Uplifted by the promise of hope for healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all according to their need. We pray for those whose hearts are fervent with love of your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to that love. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, hear our prayer. We lift prayers for the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, we pray for broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate. Forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We lift prayer for all who call upon your healing name. Stay with us and walk with all who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in mind, body, or spirit. As we gather today, we pray for Dan and the family that surrounds him, for John, Jeff, Carolyn, Marvin, Bob, Kenzie, and so many others on our hearts. We pray for those living with, recovering from, or who have died because of COVID-19, as well as all who are working so diligently in this time of crisis. Watch over, protect, and empower them. Give to all the patience and wisdom necessary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to come to the Lord's table this day, we first turn to God in confession. Beloved, we are God's children because the love of God, because of the love God has for us. Yet we sometimes fail to respond to God's outpouring of love. Let us confess our sin together. Merciful and loving God, your love for us is unconditional. Yet our love for you, for others, and for ourselves is often marred. We allow prejudice and pride to bind us. Our brokenness remains unhealed. We cling to old stories and hurts which impede the work of reconciliation. Forgive us, we pray, for failing to trust you, for playing it safe instead of following the daring call of your spirit, for withholding forgiveness and grace from ourselves and others. Let your love renew us yet again. Let the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead rekindle creative life within us and restore right relations among us. Amen. In the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus has commissioned us to announce the forgiveness of sins. You who have put your faith in Jesus, the Messiah, will receive the outcome of your faith, mercy for your sins, and resurrection life in Christ. 
siblings in Christ, your sins are forgiven. In Jesus' name, be at peace. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I would invite you to share a sign of peace today with those around you or type it into the comments that we can peace each other. Peace in the back. Peace of Christ. Peace. You guys can peace each other. We just can't peace you, but you can just do that too. <laughs> As I have for all of our Sundays, I invite you to share some sort of offering this day where you are. Um, for those of you who are giving online to our congregation, thank you. If you would like to give to St. Paul, I invite you to either drop a check in the mail, or if you go to our website, which is up on the screen, um, stpaulcallville.org, there is a Give Now button, and you can do that. But please make an offering in thanksgiving for all that God has entrusted to you. This would also be a good time, if you haven't already set up your home altar, to do that. Um, just a, a bit of bread for those who are gathered, uh, wine and glasses, enough to be consumed at this setting. Because if you don't consume it in the midst of Holy Communion, I invite you to take it and put it outside. Please do not, 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 not throw it down a drain or a trash can. Either eat it, consume it, or put it on the ground. Ms. Doris, if you could just play us something just briefly for those who maybe did not set up their home altar, that they have a couple minutes to do that. of me. And again after supper, he took the cup. Please take your cup in hand. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The things of God for all the gathered of God. Thanks be to God. I would invite you within your households to commune as we keep safe distance here and commune as well. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We close today by singing together, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.